Um, here today with Owen Zang, who is the Chief Product Officer at Data Robot and also the world's number one ranked data uh, scientist at Kygo. Welcome, Owen. Thank you. So, Owen, uh, can you give us your 30 second or 60 second bio? Uh, all right, so yes. my, my education background was in engineering, so I had a master's degree in electro, electrical engineering from University of Toronto in Canada. And after that, I found jobs in uh, IT development jobs uh, and I happened to be always in insurance companies. So eventually I uh, discovered my, or uh, rediscovered my interest in uh, data analytics and machine learning, so I switched my career to uh, predictive modeling. And uh, I, work, I continued to work at insurance companies until August the last year when I joined Data Robot. Very good. And now you recently spoke at the Open Data Science Conference in Boston. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Oh, it's great. It's a great experience. So that's the inaugural conference the first time, and I'm really, I'm really surprised positively by the, the, the turnout and the enthusiasm of all the attendees all the, and the quality of the speakers. I really look forward to the next one. Excellent. And um, it's kind of an interesting question because there's, there's so much great content online as you well. Know yourself as a data scientist. Um, of course, uh, you'd ask me all that good stuff. But um, why, do you, why do you think people come to conferences like uh, the Open Data Science Conference? Yeah, I can probably speak for myself and maybe some of my friends. So, uh, the, one of the more, more important reasons to come to a conference like this is really uh, to, to meet with people, to socialize, uh, to know, uh, to, to reconnect with those friends in the community, and to really, uh, I, really, I really hope that the people's passion is still enthusiasm and rub off on me. So that's a very important aspect. And another from a more technical reason is uh, uh, when we go online and uh, you know, watch videos, and even watch videos, even read other people's uh, uh, so, so PowerPoints or books, I mean, there is a, the, the connection is not that, that direct, right? So when we right. see people in action, when we see people face to face, not only we can see uh, the ideas that they generate, but we also can observe the thought process that really precede that idea. I think that's very, very helpful. Yeah, that's very, very true. Now, um, you mentioned in your bio that your undergrad was in uh, electrical engineering. Yeah. So how did you make the switch from discipline of electrical engineering to data science? So, so maybe it's uh, maybe it's not a switch. Maybe it's uh, going back to what I really liked. So, when I was right. since, uh, since I was a little kid, I was actually uh, very interested in in mathematics, in numbers. So, data science just working with many many numbers. So that's uh, exactly. right at home. But also, uh, data science has a very uh, heavy engineering flavor to it because a lot of times uh, the assumptions are not uh, perfect. We are really trying to find a very practical solution to a not perfectly defined problem. That's more like engineering. Uh, that's why I found I find that the the transition actually was not that hard. Okay, and um, but would you say you're self-taught? Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that aspect of it? Yeah, I would like to claim that I was self-taught, but that may be a little <laughs> bit uh, you know too arrogant of me. Uh, so I I I was very interested in mathematics numbers. So I was uh, I, I certainly picked up uh, a bit of probability theory and the statistics uh, during my uh, school years. Uh, but after that, you know, even you know, family helps because my wife happened to be a PNC actuary. So that from there, I actually got exposure to business analytics, uh, and that plus my interest and that kept that uh, uh, going. And then later, there are all the open source tools, and there is the Kaggle, and Kaggle has a very open forum. And you really in the Kaggle competitions, uh, especially the one that did really badly, under the forum, I learned a lot. Wow. Yeah, that's a very interesting aspect because. Um Data science, it is science, and you know it's open. And uh, you know, tell us a little bit about you know how how the forums kind of helped you in, in that aspect. Yeah, so so Kaggle competitors are surprisingly open in sharing their ideas. You would think that people would 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 hide their secrets, but some do. But most people are very open. So every right after every competition is over, you will see very very active sharing like how I did it. Uh, forum threads and people can ask questions and clarify. Uh, many times uh, people actually post their code and also they like yeah. explain not only what they tried and worked but also what they tried and didn't work. So it's a great, great uh, place to learn. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a very um, key point because uh, I'm sure you know there's hundreds of thousands of people on Kaggle at, at, at the moment and uh, it can be intimidating. So you know people knowing that's a good learning tool as well as a competitor tool, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. And um, Speaking of Kaggle, how did you become the world's number one Kaggle, or what was involved in that? Honestly speaking, I think uh, it's mostly luck. Uh, there's a fair amount of luck involved in every single computation because most times we are working on messy data and trying to model a very noisy target. Uh, so also, you know, to, 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 to be technical, the feature space and also the solution space are virtually infinite. So it's quite important that uh, 
uh, given the limited time allowed for allowed for each computation to be happen to be on the right track. So that, that's the sort of, that we kind of want the luck. So uh, on the other hand, I believe really being open minded and willing and ready to learn from others is very important. As you know, nobody has all the right ideas, and you really seeing other masters in in action. I think that is uh, how I maybe not learn but imitate. To yeah, get to yeah. Where. yeah, 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 and then. Um, the other aspects is useful. I think um, it's, it's a lot of effort on, on your part. I'm sure. And yeah. It takes a lot of iterations. I, I would imagine to um, you know claim the prize, so to speak. Yes, actually, it takes a lot of time. I mean, so it may be probably too much. I mean, my family probably will say it's too much. Right. Uh, so <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, there might exist the other geniuses which is, who spend a couple hours on something and then in the brilliance of them come out. It's actually possible for others, yeah. but for me, I think it's really the the, the good ideas. The, the inspirations only come after I spend hours and hours working on things that don't work at all. Yeah, and I think that's really important. People who are, um, you know, whether you're a data scientist and an aspiring one or whatnot, but it does. It's a very iterative process. Yes, you, there's, you don't just, um, you know, it's not like um, making sausage where you just turn it to a meat grinder and now <laughs> comes the uh, solution. <laughs> if I can use that, yeah, pretty poor analogy. <laughs> the talk you gave at Open Data Science Conference. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How how was it received? Yeah, so I I feel it was uh, fairly well received. So I spent uh, about thirty minutes talking about a few uh, uh, tools that I started learning and using recently, such as the XG Boost, uh, Live FFM, and uh, Opera Uh But I think that it's really the interaction after the presentation part, the interaction, the Q and C session with the audience that was the fun part. Yeah, definitely another good reason to attend, right? Yes. So speaking of um, tools, uh, you, you mentioned a few there, but can you tell us a little bit about your favorite open source tools or what you find most useful? I think the, the, the most useful tool is always the best tool for that particular problem. So there's right. so many different problems and every problem may have one or two tools that are really right solution. Or the other, there might be other things that works to a degree, but not the best tool. So I think the, you know, right now there are you know, two very large uh, kind of group of tools, one in R and one in Python. And beyond that, there are also uh, things like a Graph Lab, uh, XG Boost, uh, 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 you know, all the all the Lab SVM, all the other tools. I think uh, to be a really competent data scientist, we do need to have knowledge about a fairly large tool set and to know when to use them. Yeah, actually, that was one of the follow-up questions I have I had for you. Um, what makes a good data scientist? Oh, okay. So uh, the the good data scientist, or in other words, known as the unicorn data scientist, <laughs> <laughs> need to know at least. I've been to see that. No, I've met plenty of unicorns. <laughs> I should be careful what I say there. <laughs> unicorn data scientist. Actually, uh, we we we, we, we joke about it. So there are three aspects uh, that there are three domain. Ex there are three kind of expertise. Nice. I believe really good data scientist should master. So one is the domain expertise. So so there are. So we never really data science problem a practical problem. We always solve them for purpose. It's not math. It's not pure math. So so in order to be able to data scientist, we must understand the domain. We must know how the solution will actually help to solve a problem. Right. So that's one. Two is that the data science a good data scientist must be able to distinguish noise uh, signal from noise. That means being a very good statistician. So we must know that in certain what's the likelihood, what's the probability, what's the posterior distribution. Of a number, so beyond that is the third category is actually software engineering. So so data science are becoming uh, much more sophisticated. It's no longer that you have a data set, you run linear regression, you get a model, that's it. Yeah. So nowadays we people are talking about uh, data sets from very different sources, uh, using structured, unstructured, and a fairly uh, sophisticated modeling methodology, simple model, stat stacking, Blender, and also we want to do proper cross validation. All of them require fairly sophisticated software engineering skills. So very good data scientists ideally should be an expert in all three of them. No, that's that's, that's very very true. Um, so I used to work in uh, financial engineering, and domain expertise were kind of required in the field yeah, like absolutely. that. That's very true in all three. So you work at uh, Data Robot. Tell us a little bit about what Data Robot actually does. Yes, yeah, so this is actually a good follow-up to, to the previous question. So Data Robot is a startup company based in Boston. So the we are building a software, a cloud-based software solution, so that to help a data scientists to build better models and be uh, more efficient. So we realized that uh, to find to to find data scientists who is strong in business, strong in statistics, and strong in software engineering is pretty hard. 
So what we, what we build the product to do is to automate most of the software engineering part of the work and maybe half of the statistical work so that so the data scientist can actually focus his, uh, his energy, his or her energy in understanding the business domain and also to evaluate the model from outside to see how well it works. Only half of one? There goes yeah. my dream of being a data scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait I'll wait till the next release when you're uh, more like 90%. No, get, no, get back, even, back even half might be too, uh, too <laughs> ambitious to go that way. Got it. So, um, and your title there is uh, Chief Product Officer. Um, so what is, what is the, the day job of a Chief Product Officer at a, you know, a data analytics startup? And uh, you know, what are you coding these days? Yeah, so, yeah, so, so product, uh, product manager's job is more or less to manage the product roadmap, or in other words, the future of the product. So uh, we, I, as a product manager, collect ideas from both outside from our customers and potential customers, also inside the company from engineers, uh, our data scientists, uh, so that we maintain a very comprehensive list of other ideas, and that get prioritized and defined into the product roadmap. Then I will work with the engineering and R and T team to implement those features. So regarding the coding question, it, it is an inf interesting question. People ask me, do we code in R or Python? So my answer is that I code in Google Docs, so mostly English words, right? Right. So because that's uh, you know trying to. Uh, so as a product manager, the most important job for me is to actually prioritize the right features and have them defined uh, properly as requirements. Very, very good. Well, Owen, a pleasure talking to you as always, and you know we are very much looking forward to your next talk. Thank you once again. Okay. Thank you for having me. You're very well. Owen.